probiotics versus prebiotics. You know, oftentimes people confuse the two, but what is clear is the strong demand worldwide. Probiotics are much more popular. In 2022, the global market reached a value of about $58 billion. Now, by the end of 2027, the market for probiotics is expected to reach more than $85 billion. That's according to Statista. But what exactly are probiotics and how are they different from prebiotics? How do you know if you need them and what are the risks? We're gonna dive into all of it right now as we ask the expert. All right, Dr. Natasha Bouillon, start with the difference between pro versus the prebiotics. Yes, so probiotics are live bacteria and yeast that can have beneficial effects on our body, especially on our gut. Our gut is really complex. It's made up of all kinds of microorganisms and sometimes it gets out of balance depending on our health, what we're eating, and so probiotics can help restore that balance. It's different than prebiotics because prebiotics are actually the food that the bacteria eat to thrive. Okay, all right, so when should you take them? You know, it's interesting because so many people think that they should take a daily probiotic supplement just for their general health and wellness, but the research actually shows taking a probiotic for specific conditions is often more beneficial. So number one is when someone is taking antibiotics. And so if they're taking antibiotics, that can actually really destroy our gut yeah. and really take away all of the good bacteria in addition to the bad bacteria. This is why oftentimes when people are taking antibiotics, they might have loose stools. So always take a probiotic when you're taking any antibiotic. Uh, Another time is if somebody has a GI bug, okay. you know, there's evidence that shows if someone takes a probiotic, anytime they get an upset stomach or a mm -hmm. GI bug, it can actually shorten the duration of that illness by about 25 hours. Mm. We also see this in constipation in children, giving, um, children with constipation, a probiotic, can help alleviate the constipation. But it's not all for gut health. Yeah. Quite interesting is gum disease. So people who are prone to gum disease or prone to cavities, if they take a probiotic even for a short amount of time, it can give their saliva some good bacteria that can help fight the formation of cavities in the future. Wow. And then the last big category is a condition called IBS. A lot of my patients have this. IBS is very common. For people who have IBS, even if they take a probiotic just for eight weeks, mm -hmm. it can reduce reduce abdominal cramping, bloating, and gas for a longer amount of time. Wow. So lots of different benefits for really specific conditions. Yeah, and of course, you always want to talk to your doctor about what would be best for exactly. you. And if you need it. Exactly. So what are the risks? You know, it's quite interesting because in some people who are immunocompromised, if they take a probiotic, there's been cases where they end up getting an actual infection, like a oh. blood infection. And so you know, people who have cancer, if they're on chemotherapy, taking a long-term steroid. And the reason why is we think that their immune system isn't able to regulate that gut flora and that balance. And so when they take a probiotic, they might actually proliferate a bacteria and they might end up getting sick. Oh and there's also, you know, instances of preterm infants, you know, other vulnerable populations, people with valvular heart disease. There's been reports of bacteria seeding on that heart valve. So I think those people should definitely talk to their doctors. Yeah, that's frightening. Okay, so we know that there are food sources where you can get this. You don't always have to take the pill. So yeah. let's talk about the food sources. Yeah, you know, that's such a great question because so many people think they can only get pro and prebiotics from supplements, yeah. but actually prebiotics are best through foods. And there's all kinds of foods that you can get prebiotics from, you know, asparagus, onions, peas, artichokes. So there's a wide range of foods that you should eat in order to make sure that you're giving the good bacteria in your gut some good food. Yeah. Probiotics are a little different. So probiotics you can often get through fermented foods, yes. you know, like yogurt, sauerkraut, Kimchi. So soup. Exactly. Love. Yeah. Those are great sources of probiotics, mm -hmm. but they're not in really high quantities. And so if you do have something like you're taking an antibiotic, yes, you can take a yogurt, but sometimes it's better to take that supplement as well. Oh, all right. Good stuff. All right, Natasha, thank you so very much.